Hey guys, today we're gonna to start editing that video we just shot and we're going to do it using iMovie because iMovie is free on every Mac. So if you have a Mac, you already have the software and it is super easy to use. I'm gonna walk through a couple of steps on how to create your video right now. Okay, so let's jump on in and hop right into iMovie and see if we can get started. From Launchpad, I'm gonna open iMovie. This drops me right into a brand new project that uh, I can work in. I have my movie library right here and uh, my project media folder right there. First thing I want to do is I'm going to jump back over to projects and I'm going to click on create new. And what that does, it gives me a pop up here where I have a choice of creating a movie or a trailer. We're going to be creating a movie tonight. Once my project is created, I'm going to hit back over to projects because I don't like the my movie title that it gives it. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a meaningful title for me. And that's going to be video 62 because this is my 60 second video that I'm creating. That pops us back over into this projects window and I'm going to go right back into my video 62. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in my video clips that I shot earlier. I have my video clips organized on my external hard drive and uh, they're in video 62 and the folder is the RP because I'm, I shot all this with the Canon RP and I shot it all in 1080p. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all those videos and the easiest way to get this in is just drag and drop them right onto the import. Okay, so once they're imported, you can see you can scrub through the video. It's important to note that the import isn't complete until this circle here is completely filled in. You can see the status of the import up here and it'll tell you which which file it's importing and how far along it is. The reason this is important, these files once imported can be exported but you can't export them before that. You can however start editing them even if you haven't completed the import yet. As you can tell it goes pretty quick, everything's in. So the first thing I want to do after I've done that is I want to get all of these files onto my timeline. The easiest way to do that is just select everything and press E. All right, so all the clips have been added to the timeline. Next thing I want to do is I want to start walking through these clips and getting rid of what I don't want. All right, I can see right off the bat I don't want a lot of this stuff. So there's a couple of ways that I can shorten this video. I can scrub through to the point where I want to start the video. And in this case, that looks pretty good. Now, if this is too small, I can change the scale or the, the size of the, the video track that I'm looking at by moving this little slider across. So let's go ahead and sc scroll this over a little bit so I have a little better idea of what I'm looking at. And this is pretty good. Now you can see these, these empty spaces right here. These represent times on my timeline where I wasn't speaking. So there's stuff between. It's probably where I'm thinking about something, taking a breath, or checking my notes for the next bit. So I've decided I don't want anything on the left side of this this particular empty space. So I can right mouse click here and I can say uh, split clip. I can then select the, the part that I don't want and just hit delete. It has a ripple effect and brings everything back down to the beginning and now I just have the clip that I wanted to work with. Again I don't want the silence back here so now I have a second way that I can do this I can go to the edge of the clip and I can grab the end and I can just drag it back to where I want it to stop. I can do the same thing in the front here. I can really just drag it across. So those are the two ways that you can cut a clip in half or split a piece out that you want right on the timeline. You can do the same thing up here by selecting an in point and an out point of where you want your video to start and end when you're bringing it in. How do you select an endpoint and an out point? You can simply select the video up here and you can drag it's everything selected. You can select a single video up here and you can drag by these handles your in point and your out point and then you can add that clip to your timeline. We're going to undo that because I didn't want to add that clip. You can also just scrub across it 
and where you want it to begin, press I, and that brings the in point there, and where you want it to stop, you can press O for out, and that brings the out point there. Now you have your in point and out point set, and again, you can just press the plus sign and add it back in. If you didn't want to do it via the plus sign, you can also just hit the E, and that adds it at end. Let's delete that back out, because we already have that clip in. All right, so that's how you start cutting your video. It's kind of important to walk through here and get rid of anything that you don't think you're going to need. So I'm going to quickly do that. I'm just taking out these uh, empty spaces at the ends and beginnings. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, slide over. Let's pick this video it out a bit. Now in the center piece here I've got a piece that I don't want. I'm going to go ahead and move this cursor where I want to split this video and then simply right mouse click split. And I'm going to move the cursor to the next place where I want the video to start and I can again just say split. Alright so that's how you get rid of the little bits and pieces. Now as you're shooting through this you're going to see that I'm getting hard cuts here. Alright so if I, if I let this run Can result in a jump cut right there. So let's do that again. Okay. Alright, so I didn't really like the way this jumped, so we're going to go ahead and take the next clip and we're going to add a different kind of a clip here. And what we're going to do is we're going to shrink this start and we're going to have it be about where the other one was. And then the end position for this, we're going to grow it back to its full original size. So if we scrub through this, it should accomplish the thing that we want. So let's go ahead and play that. All right. So what I've accomplished here is I've gotten some interesting movement happening in the clip itself so that it's not just a boring jump cut between two clips from one to the next, but it actually provides a little bit of action here. So typically I'm going to move through all of these clips, I'm going to move all the white spaces, and I'm going to change all these jump cuts that I don't like, and I can actually let that live just the way it is. Now when a, a cut looks like that, I want to change the size a little bit of one of the two clips. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and crop this. And we're going to take the second video. Let's bring this back up here. And we're going to let it crop down to the size. So now when that jump cut happens, it doesn't feel as abrupt. It feels more like it was a planned event and not something I was fixing after it it didn't work out when I was shooting it. A little nicer on the eyes. All right, so the next thing we want to look at here is once you've got all your videos cut and you've got all your transitions done, we're going to need to adjust the color a little bit. This thing doesn't look quite the way that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and select my clip and I'm going to hit this color palette thing. And uh, right off the bat, I think it's just a little bit too dark. So I'm going to bring up the dark shadows here. Okay, much better. I like that better. This is the only color grading I'm going to do on this video because iMovie is somewhat limited in color grading, but uh, we, we can do a few things. And uh, the highlights, I'm going to bring them down a little bit too. Let's bring the highlights down a little bit more. And that's going to kind of help with this overexposed bits. And we'll bring the darks up a little bit just so that it matches kind of where I want it to be. I think that's not bad. Okay. You can also adjust the color temperature. So if you wanted it to be warmer or cooler, you can do that here. I'm going to make it a little bit cooler. And you can adjust the saturation so it gets more color in or less color out. All right. I kind of like the saturation where it was. And I'm going to temperature up a tiny bit. 
I just have it a little bit cooler than it looked. All right, that's good for me. So once I've done my color correction, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this clip and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to go to my next clip and I'm going to go to edit, uh, paste adjustments, the color correction and by doing that, the second clip gets that same correction. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for all the clips in my timeline here and then everything will be have basically the same color. All right, once I've done all my color correction, I'm happy with the way it looks. The next step for me is to bring in the music. Now, if I'm going to be playing music throughout the entire video, then I like to cut to that music, just so it kind of lines up and, and, and the, the changes in the tempo of the music are reflected in the video itself. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in this music that I've pre-selected for the video. And to get this audio track, this music track, onto your timeline, simply drag it down onto the timeline. It drops in right below your existing timeline. So let's jump right in and get started with your camera and getting into it. One of the things I like to do with my music is I don't like it to just kind of start right at the beginning, but I also don't want it to just be cut off and then start in the middle. So when you look here, there's this little round circle. Your, your cursor turns into these two arrows. If you grab that, it lowers the volume and makes it fade in. So let's jump right in and get started with your camera. All right, so that was too long of a, a fade in, so I'm gonna bring it back just so you get a good feel for it. So let's jump right in and get started with your camera and getting you the next step for me is always to lower the volume of the music so that it doesn't overwhelm what's going on in the actual video. So let's jump right in and get started with your camera and getting you familiarized with your camera. Okay, so the first thing that I, I like the, the audio track to be just faint enough that you can hear it, but not loud enough that it interferes with the actual talking parts of the video. Now in this case, I don't really want to put the music track all the way in, so I'm going to just push this out towards the end because I think this is a subject matter that doesn't require a music bed. But I still want to have a music bed or I still want to have a music track. I'm just going to put it towards the end of my video. Now I like to play the music into the end screen of the video because it kind of, I think it generates more interest. So I like to leave 20 seconds, approximately 20 seconds of audio after the video ends. So I'm going to go ahead and split the clip here. Once we hit this point where I stop talking, I want this audio to go back up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, and this is where I want things to change. So I'm going to split the clip right here. And I'm going to bring the volume back up to probably close to 100% here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this so that it kind of escalates from where it was so it doesn't just suddenly do it. Let's get a little bit bigger here, get a better clue of what's going on. And let's bring this back a little bit more. All right, so what does it sound like? All right, so the, as the audio ended, the music came in stronger and increased, and you can hear it better. Okay, so once you have completed your edit and you're happy and you want to get this thing exported, go ahead and click on File and Share, and then select YouTube and Facebook. Now, they come up with all the wrong settings, so 640 by 360 is a terrible setting for any video. So let's go ahead and change that straight up to, at the very least, uh, 1080p here. That's the 1920 by 1080. That's 1080p. All right. It's going to create a video of, a one, in this case, of a 1.2 gigabyte size. We're going to go ahead and next. We're going to tell it where we want it to go. In my case, I'm going to change the directory here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my external hard drive into my folder, video 62, and new folder, iMovie. 
create and save and up here at the top you can follow the progress as it exports the video now this is an m1 mac mini so it's going to go pretty quick it's saying six minutes that is actually fairly decent once this is exported out you'll be able to upload it to youtube all right guys uh, go ahead and hit like if you like this video subscribe to my channel if you'd like to and uh, ring the bell to be notified about future videos and next week we're going to talk about how to upload this video and how to create its thumbnail make sure you tune in for that one it's going to be a great video until next time